Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a different kind of video. I will be making some cards with you guys, but I'm going to be using some pre-colored images from this little dish that I keep on my desk that just has a lot of leftover images or images from different trial and errors, you know, where I wanted to get like a hair color or just try different things. So I'm going to be using these today and um, I'm going to be just filming like this, like I do with my art journaling videos and my haul videos. There won't be any voiceover. There will be minimal editing. So this will probably be on the longer side because I'm going to try to do a couple cards in one video. But we're just going to dive in and kind of see how it goes. I want to use up these images. They've been sitting here on my desk for a really long time. And you guys, um, I asked you if you were interested in seeing this turn into a video and the overwhelming response was yes. I found out that quite a lot of us have pre-colored images that are just waiting to be used on cards. So if you'd like to craft along with me, you can go ahead and grab some of those images and we're just gonna have a fun time chatting and creating together. Um, or you can just watch and hopefully be inspired to use some of the images that you have. Um, or give you ideas for images you might have in the future. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is just sort through this entire dish of images. We're obviously not going to get to all of them today, but I'm just going to kind of create some piles of images that might go together on the front of a card, and we'll see how they go from there. So. Um, let's see, I've got this little girl here. This is a birdie brown image from MFT. You can see I've colored her very similarly on these two images. I was just trying out different color palettes. This one is a little bit darker. This one is a little bit lighter, both in her hair and her dress. So we've got those. I've got this little Viking guy that I think I colored five years ago at least, and he still has yet to be used on a card. Not even entirely sure. I still have that stamp set, but we'll see. Let's see, we've got a Hello Bluebird little girl. We've got some Hello Bluebird critters that go with the kites. So there's those. Those are all from the same set. Here's another birdie brown image from a card I was making years ago and never finished. So we'll set her in her own pile. This also goes with this set. This little dog goes with the unicorn girls. We've got some astronauts. These are Avery L images. I know there's a bunch of those. This corgi goes with her. There's another Hello Bluebird image, a little fairy. I was just trying out some different patterns on dresses with my Copics and also different skin and hair colors on those guys. So that was a practice round. That goes with that. Some Hello Bluebird flowers. I think that went with the fairy set. There's a Christmas image from Hello Bluebird. We won't be using that today. I'm not in the mood for Christmas. More Hello Bluebird. Let's see here. Here's a, a Mama Elephant. There's another Corgi. This is another Hello Bluebird image, but it's not from the same set, but I'm going to put it in that pile anyway, because I don't think I'm going to get to those today anyway, because I want to use some of the ones that um, have more images maybe to create some, some scenes. So we'll see. Mama Elephant. That's a Lawn Fawn Pumpkin. I can always throw my extra clouds in here as well so I can have those to use. So there's some different, there's another lawn fawn image. I'm not going to get to that one today, I don't think either, so I'll just put that in that pile. That one goes there with another mama elephant. Here's a different mama elephant set. That's a lawn fawn rake. I think that was a mama elephant umbrella for something. We'll just set that aside. Let's see, this goes with her. Hello, Bluebird. 
That's also Hello Bluebird. A little present. Fall leaves. Fall leaves are also another thing that I end up with extras because sometimes I don't know how many I'm going to need in a scene. So I always just throw those in there. That goes with them, I think. There's some more kite strings. That goes with her. I think that might be a kite string. So you can see the first step, to me anyway, is just organizing your images into piles and kind of getting an idea of what you have to work with. That would be my first step. I know some of you guys, that could be with anything. I'm not sure what that came with, but you know what? It's kind of discolored, so I'm probably just going to toss that one. It's got some yellow on the turquoise. I don't think that looks very good anymore. Those are lawn fawn. Those are some fall leaves. Um, but yeah, you want to kind of just separate things into piles and maybe see what inspires you. You know, as you start to separate things out, you might start to feel an inclination to create with something. That's Hello Bluebird. I think the stars go with those guys. Strawberries, Hello Bluebird. That is Lawn Fawn. That goes with them. Another fall leaf. Almost done here. And that's Lawn Fawn. Okay, so that's what we have to work with today. We've got all our things sorted into piles. And already I can see I've got a nice pile going here. So I think I'm going to set these guys aside. We'll do a card with those today. So that's one card. Okay, we definitely have enough for a scene with these guys as well. So I'll put those in a pile. I don't think I'm going to use those, so those can go back in the dish. I don't have enough to create a whole card with these guys without stamping out something else, so those will go back in the dish. Same goes for these fairies. Um, this little pile of lawn fawn accessory images. Not going to get to those today, so we'll put those aside. Um, the astronauts I might be able to use today. These guys... Hmm. I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure about those guys. So let's put them back in the bowl for now. Same with this girl and her kitty. It's not enough for me to do a scene. I'm gonna try to do scenes using just what I have already stamped, so I don't have to stamp and color anything else. These girls would be fun to use, um, at least one of them. I wouldn't put both of them on the card because they're colored identically almost. Um, we might get to those. We'll see. But I'm just going to put them on top because I think we have enough to work with. Same with this guy. I'm not really sure what I would put him with. So I'm going to start with something that I'm already kind of getting inspired for which is going to be these images here. So we'll just push everything else off to the side. And then I've got some pre-colored backgrounds as well that I have done in the past. So I'm just going to flip through and take out anything that's already colored. So there's something. There is a background that could be used. There is a background that could be used. Um, this one is a, this is a lots of samples from a Sandy Allnock underwater class that I was practicing. So you can see my sketches got progressively better as I went. Still not great, but I could use this one on a card, but it doesn't really go with anything I've got. So I think we'll not use those today. Um, then I just have some other colored images and then also some stamped backgrounds. But those are not ready to use yet. So that's what we have to work with starting out. So let's see what we can do with those. 
So already I think that this background here might work really great with these astronauts. So that could be a space background. It was intended to be a rainy day background, but I think this could work for outer space. So I'm gonna just scoop those guys up together and set them off to the side. And then let's see the clouds. The pink doesn't go with her, so it's definitely not what I want to use for her. It could go with these guys. There's some pink in there. That might work. We'd have to make a, a, a ground for them. The other thing that the, this background could work with would be these guys. The pink would be pretty, but there's a lot of empty space, so I would probably have to alter the background some way, cut it into a different shape perhaps. Um, and I'm not sure if I would want them to just be standing on that background like that, just kind of floating in space, or if I would need, need something to anchor them. So let's not work on that one yet because that one we'll just set aside. So we'll set those guys aside as well. But this one seems like a good contender for this set of images right here. So let's go ahead and see what this might look like. We'll just lay out the images and kind of see. So there's this road here. We could definitely have her biking across this road. You could put her different places. Let's stick her right there for now and kind of see. So the balloon, I would like to turn this into a birthday card just because I always need birthday cards. So if we use the balloon, that would go back here. So we would have to move her up along the road a little bit to have enough room to tie that onto the back. So that still works. That could look cute right there. All right, we've got her little dogs. So we could have one kind of running behind and maybe one running on the grass because there's a lot of empty space over here. So maybe there, he's kind of gone off the road. We've got her basket of flowers. Maybe we'll put those in the front or the back, but I think we've got a couple of presents here that could work. And these are all colored with the same general color palette. I think this one was actually colored to go with something else, but the brown kind of fits with the scene and the different browns in the scene between this corgi and that corgi and the tree back there. There's a bunch of different browns, her pants, the baskets, so I think it fits. So we could put probably both gifts in the back, maybe one there and then another one kind of overlapping it a little bit. I would maybe want to put the turquoise one in front because it has a little bit more detail with those polka dots. So that could work. We do have these fall leaves, but honestly, I'm not feeling the fall right now. And in this colored background, the tree is green. So the yellow leaves don't really suit this scene. So I think we're gonna skip those leaves for today, which is fine because I'm not really in the fall mood anyway. So there we go. There's a little scene laid out. So I think all I would need to finish this one off would be a stamped sentiment, maybe somewhere right in here. So we could do that. I also think it might be fun to use some pattern paper on this card. So I could die cut this scene to be a little bit smaller. You can see that there's room because none of the images completely overlap the outside edges. So there is some room to cut this scene down a little bit and layer some pattern paper behind it. There's not a ton. I would probably want to use um, you know, a, a die that will only trim off a little bit because I really don't want to lose too much of this scene. So we could do that. Let me see if I've got, it actually makes me think of a pattern paper pad that I recently shared in a haul, which is this one here. It's the Doodlebug Designs Great Outdoors. It has a very similar color palette. Do you guys see that? 
sorry, I had to stand up to make sure that that is in frame. So let's flip through and see if there's anything that would just work with this. This is more of a boyish pad, but there might be something. I remember that there were some florals in here. The orange plaid could work as well. So let's keep that in mind. That would tie in the ribbon on this gift and also the ribbon in her hair. And we also have some orange flower centers there. So that could be really pretty. It's also like got a little bit of a yellowy um, color in the, in the base of that plaid which would tie in nicely with the bike and the yellow flowers. So we'll keep that one in mind for sure. But I think there was, we could also use this wood grain that would bring in the browns and the texture from the tree. That's a possibility. Okay, here, this is the one I was remembering. So, Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and just carefully pick up this seam and we'll set it onto the pattern paper. And wow, that's really a great match. Um, you can see that it pulls in the turquoise from there and from her sweater. It pulls in the aqua blues, it pulls in the greens, pulls in the oranges and the yellows. The only thing I don't have represented in this background is the, that pop of dark blue, um, which tells me that I want to minimalize this dark blue color. So if I'm going to mix a pattern paper with this background, which I do think I will, to just tone out um, how vibrant and, you know, it's got a lot going on. So to tone that down and pull the focus to the center, I think I do want to layer something on top of it, but I don't want to pull in this blue. I want to minimize that blue because it's not anywhere in this background or in the colored images. Does that make sense? Okay, so I am going to grab a die cut. I'm gonna look through and see what I've got that will just trim the scene down slightly to give me room on the card for a little bit of pattern paper. All right, so I've pulled out the Lawn Fawn Large and Small Stitch Rectangle Stackables. This is two die sets. I just have them stacked together in one pocket to make it easier. So the tallest one, the biggest one, is a full-size A2 card. So I don't want that one. What I want to do is see if this second size is going to be large enough to contain this scene. Um, because if it's not, then I need to go with a bigger die, which means this set won't work because then I can't use any pattern paper. So let's just lay this one out and kind of see what that would look like. So I would have to adjust up a little bit. Let's see. I would have to move the dogs up a little bit. And I think I would rather trim off more of the bottom than the top because then I'm going to lose all of those pretty green leaves at the top. And I really don't want to do that. So let's shift that slightly higher and kind of see how that's looking. So that is going to make me have to adjust her a little bit higher. There's still room for her balloon, so that's good. The dogs would have to go maybe right here. And right here, back on the road. But I still have room to get everything in frame. And I have room for a sentiment right there. So I think this is a good pick. I think I'm going to go with this one because it's if I go with anything larger than this one, I'm only going to get just the barest sliver of pattern paper. This is going to give me a little bit more. So I think I'm going to do that. And in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead because I like that positioning right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and tape that die down before I get it, you know, off where I wanted it. So let's tape that into place and then we'll remove our images. Let's get 
these guys out of the way. And I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. I'll be right back. Okay, so there we go. We have a much smaller little scene there, but that is going to be perfect because it's going to give me room to use this larger die on the pattern paper. So since I'm already die cutting, we'll set this aside for right now and we'll go back to this pattern. Let's take that one out. And then I think I want the the orange plaid that I mentioned. That's going to look really good together. And you know, I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to bother with the brown. Should I? Where was that brown? You know what, maybe I will. Just because there's so much brown in the coloring and there's not very much brown in this floral print, there is just the tiny centers of the flowers. So to tie all that brown in and make it look like this was planned to come together, I think I will use that brown. All right, so I've got my base print of pattern paper there. And then I've got this one that I think I'm gonna run right across the center. And then this one, I did end up making it a little bit wider. And I think I'm going to run that one right there. So then I'm going to take the die and I'm going to just place that just like that and run that through my die cutting machine and cut all of those out with one pass. All right, so the next thing is to decide on my sentiment. And that is going to go somewhere in here, right before, between the tree and this kind of swooping line here. I want it to be right about in there. So I went to the Best Days stamp set, which is where those images came from, all except for the gift, which was from Christmas is Coming. Um, it doesn't really have a sentiment that I want to use because none of them are really birthday themed. So I think I'm gonna go to this one here, this Balloon, Blood, Balloon Buddies stamp set from Hello Bluebird as well. And we've got Today is All About You and also Happy Birthday. And I think I'm gonna use the Today is All About You because I would like a larger sentiment to kind of fill this space a bit more. So I'm thinking that one. I don't know. I don't know. Will people get from that sentiment alone that it's a birthday card is what I'm debating about. So should I just go with the happy birthday? I wish that uh, Hello Bluebird had more birthday sentiments. Hopefully they'll come out with some more good ones because um, that's one that I just feel like I'm always trying to find the perfect thing and not quite finding what I'm looking for. So hopefully they will come out with some more of those. I think that would be amazing. Just flipping through some other stamp sets on my desk right here but not really seeing anything that will work. Let me just think about it another second here. Okay, so I found the Party on the Farm stamp set, and it also has two birthday sentiments, and they are just a little bit larger than the ones in Balloon Buddies, so let me try these. Let's see. Let's maybe do It's Your Day. Or should I stack them? Happy birthday, it's your day. Okay, maybe that. That kind of looks good. Just making sure that they are on there nice and straight. And I think I'm going to stamp those down with some 
Versifying Onyx Black ink because this is really, really dark. It does stay wet for a while though, so you do have to be careful not to smear it for a little while, or you could heat set it with a heat gun. So I'm making sure that that is inked up really well. And let me find my pressure pal here from Twiddler's Nook. So we'll just go ahead and smooth over that for even pressure. Okay, let's do it one more time. It doesn't feel like it's that even. It's darker over here than it is on this side, so we'll do it one more time. And this time we'll press a little bit harder on this side. Okay, I like that a lot better. So we'll just set that aside to dry. And then we need to do the inside of the card. And I think I'm gonna go with a yellow card base. I like that sunshiny color for this time of year. And it also ties in really well with the pattern paper. So I think that's what I'm going to use. So let me just see what I wanna stamp on the inside. I did decide to go back to the Best Days stamp set. And I've picked a few images from that one and then the sentiment that says wishing you a lovely day and I am going to stamp that down using Lawn Fawn's Sunflower ink. So there we go. I have the little corgi again. He's kind of gone off the trail and he's chasing after a bee and that's super light. So I am going to have to stamp that down a few times because I'm doing yellow on yellow, which is kind of hard to see. Plus the Lawn Fawn inks do dry back a little bit as they settle into the cardstock and dry. So I want to make sure it's bold enough to be able to see. So we'll just continue that and maybe one more time because I feel like that sentiment just isn't dark enough still so let's press down there okay and I like that a lot better you can see that clearly now and here is something that you guys never get to see on screen but I, while I have my ink from stamping the inside out I always stamp my um, my personal stamp on the back. I had this made on Etsy years and years and years ago, so I can't even remember what company it was, but it's just like a cling stamp and I keep it on this acrylic block here. And it just has my username and website. So I just go ahead and stamp that down really well. And then I flip the card over and continue filming. <laughs> All right, well, I think we are ready to start adhering things down. I'm just going to smooth out this spine one more time with my Lawn Fawn Teflon Bone Folder because I want to make sure that that lays nice and flat. And then we have our pattern paper. So I'll go ahead and adhere those down using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. Start with the floral print. And we'll just make sure that that is lined up with the sides, all four corners, nice and straight. Okay. And we'll do this little orange plaid. And put that right across the center. Just make sure that is lined up nicely. And then we have the brown wood grain. And I did make sure to cut it um, going up and down to kind of match the tree wood grain that will be on the focal panel. So just make sure that that is lined up nice and straight. Making sure I have even amounts. It looks like it needs to go a little more towards the left. That's about centered. Okay. So then we've got the focal panel. And I think I want to pop that up with some foam tape for a little bit of dimension. So we'll just turn that over. 
got a few strips that are already cut down, so I'll use up those first. And I like to use plenty because I've gotten cards in the mail that when they come, you know, the background is all buckled because of going through the mail. And I, I would really like my cards not to do that if possible. So I try to put enough foam tape on the back that the background is really well supported. So just continue adding that. Making sure that, that sentiment isn't smearing because it is still a little wet. If I would brush my fingers over it, it would probably smear. So you just want to be careful. Put that one there in the middle. I had a little extra piece there that I can just stick right there. All right. So get those release papers peeled off. So you guys have to let me know if this is entertaining for you. I know this is a much slower pace than my normal videos because normally I do speed them up a bit to, uh, you know, just not make them so long. So that won't be the case here. All right. So we'll see how you guys like it in real time. So we'll just line that up. Make sure it's nice and centered that I have the same amount of cardstock or pattern paper showing in these corners and down the sides on both sides. That is just about right. Okay, and then we'll bring in the images. All right, so we're gonna start with the girl again because she's the main image. And I just wanna make sure that I still have enough room for her balloon so we'll kind of use that as a placeholder and I don't mind if the string goes over the scene just a tiny bit I think that is just about perfect for her so we'll leave the balloon there for a second and then we can go ahead and adhere her down I do love this glue because you can get in all these little tiny areas it would be really hard to do with other glues with a wider tip Get her good and adhered down. I think that's about where we had her, right? Right about there. Make sure those tires are Adhered. Okay, oh, that reminds me. I definitely want to get these gifts in there because this is going to dry quickly. So let me slip those gifts in her back little pouch here or uh, basket. And I think I will put them in front of her hair because if I tuck them behind her hair, you're not going to see the ribbons on the top. So I think her hair is kind of blowing behind. Put this one in front and then maybe while they're still wet I can give this one just a little tilt towards the front so you can see more of it and get that little sliver of that yellow bow which is going to tie in to everything else here. Make sure that those tires are down. We'll get the balloon on there since that's kind of also tucked behind. Right down here. Right about there, maybe. Okay. So, yeah, this is what it's like in real time. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm not sure exactly where things go, so, I, you know, there are decisions to be made. Because this flower could have easily gone in the back because um, it's a wider basket, but then I wouldn't have had room for both presents, or at least you wouldn't have seen very much of them because they would have had to be closer together. So I think it was a good decision to put it right here. So we'll add that to the front basket. And then we have our two corgis. We could have 
Then I'm going this way where we could swap and have them going this way. I feel like I like this one better. He's more striking against the tire. Um, this one kind of gets lost back there, I feel like, a little bit more. I don't know. Either way would work, though. But I think I like it better this way. So let's do that. So go ahead and tear this guy down. He's kind of leaping along the path. And then we got this guy going a bit off the path and doing his own thing. So just press those guys down. There we go. So all that's left for this one is maybe like a little bit of glitter. <laughs> I'm sure you knew that was coming, right? So let's see. Let's do some glitter on the balloon. Kind of using the nib to swirl it around. I'm not going to fill the whole thing in, but just a little bit there. And then maybe um, maybe the ribbons on her gifts could have a little bit. And maybe her hair as well. Again, not taking that up the whole way, just partial. And then maybe we'll do a couple of these larger flower centers. And I think that's it. I think that's enough. So there we go. One card done. So there we have a look at that one a little bit closer. I think that turned out really cute. I love the colors. There's the inside. And yeah, there we go. One and done. All right, so I have no idea how long we've been going, but I would really like to do at least one more today. And then if you guys like this, maybe we'll do a another um, day where we can do a couple. I know I have to take my son to work uh, maybe about an hour. So let's see if we can get one more done in that time. So let me take a look here. So the, what I'm thinking of doing is this one with the astronauts, just because I already have the background completed for it and um, it, I have the most, the second most images. So I think I can fill up a whole scene. So let's go ahead and do this one. So we've got kind of like a girl card and a boy card anyway. So I know I'm gonna have to do something about stars though, because I only have two stars stamped out here. So we'll see what we'll see. All right, so let's see. This guy looks like he's standing. So this was supposed to originally be like a sidewalk, but it could be the surface of the moon or something. So let's see. Maybe this guy could be holding this little alien's hand because they kind of look like they're reaching toward each other. So we could do that. And then maybe this guy is floating in space. We've got the moon, which will make it a birthday card because he's got the cake. And we've got this rocket. So maybe he's holding on to that. So there we go. Something like that. Kind of looks good. And like I said, I only have two stars, so that could be an issue. I might have to stamp and color a couple stars, but now it will be difficult to remember what color combo I had used on these. So let's see. Um, how am I liking that? I think once again, I would want to trim this panel down a bit. Um, also, running it through the die cut machine would flatten it out a bit, hopefully, from the pressure. So that would be nice since this originally had a lot of water on it because it was a ink blended background and I had uh, splattered some water on it. So it definitely is a little bit warped. But do I want to use the same exact die? Maybe. 
and then I could pull in some pattern paper. This actually brings to mind um, this pattern paper pad here that I used recently on the MFT channel. It's like a patriotic themed paper pad, but the color palette would work really well. So I think I could maybe use something from this or a few prints from this. Maybe that plaid or those stars right there. That would be really cool. Or the stars and the stripes. Those would be pretty, those red, white, and blue stripes. And it makes it not so, you know, like 4th of July themed. Today's July 5th, by the way. So this kind of goes, but I don't really want it to be a 4th of July theme. I would like it to be, you know, just like a boyish birthday, um, which reminds me I'm going to need a sentiment somewhere in here as well. So I'm going to have to leave some room for that. But yeah, I think this will be a good pad to use with this set. So I think I need to trim this down. So let's just use the same dies we had out. Um, that way we don't have to dig through and it'll make things a lot easier. So this would be the die and it definitely fits. Just have to make a slight adjustment there, but that would definitely work. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that into place and run that through my die cut machine and then I'll make a decision about the sentiment and stuff uh, afterwards. Just knock all those guys out of there. Okay. Okay, as predicted, it did flatten it out quite a bit running it through the die cut machine. So um, that's great. A little bit of uh, foam tape on the back of that is going to make that nice and flat on a card. So let's go ahead while I'm die cutting things and flip through and make a decision about the pattern paper. So I do have some of these already cut down from that previous card. I could maybe use something like that. Let's see. Something like that could be good. I want some of this in there as well. No, definitely this way or you wouldn't see the stripes. I could put like a sliver of this, but I don't think I like it with the plaid. So what about the opposite way? I could do it this way and have a sliver of this on the side. Something like, like that. That might be nice. And you can't see the full dice because, you know, it, would, it cuts out a little bit bigger because we're looking at the back side of it. But, um, yeah, I think that might work, actually. So I can just use up my scraps and not have to cut down any more. Or would I rather have... This stripe, though, I do really like this stripe. Maybe just this and this. Maybe that. Let's do something different since I just used these on a card. Let's go ahead. I, I, I do like this stripe and I feel like it makes it feel less patriotic which is a good thing. So let's do that. So I'm going to cut these two out with this die. Okay, so I was sorting through my Avery L stamp sets and I found this one called Speech Bubbles that I think is going to work perfect for this card because I should be able to squeeze it in on the scene and that way I don't have to worry about like heat embossing or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the speech bubble using my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. So let me just go ahead and stamp that down. And I will stamp that twice so it matches the intensity of the rest of my images since I always stamp my images twice. 
and then I'm going to stamp inside that speech bubble with a sentiment that says make a wish. So that will be a birthday card as well. Let's see, here we go. So we'll just add that one. Right inside, try to get that fairly even. And then there are like these little lines that you can use to kind of fill in the empty spaces. So I might go ahead and add one of those right down here because there's a little bit of empty space. It's always so fiddly to get these lined up right though because they stick to your fingers. Does that look okay? Let's go with that. Okay. And no, you don't have to use sentiments always from the same company as the images. But I typically like to because usually it's the same few illustrators or just the same one illustrator that is designing the sets. So everything just matches really well together when you do use the same manufacturer. But of course you don't have to, you know, if you can't find what you're looking for from them, go ahead and search your stash for something else that'll work. So there we have that. So I'm going to die cut that with the matching die. And then let's see, for the inside of the card, I thought I would go with a moonstone card base from Lawn Fawn rather than anything red, white, or blue because the stripes, well actually both of the pattern papers, they have the navy, but they also have this um, middle blue tone, which matches really well with the moonstone. It's the same tone, this is just lighter, but that will make it easy to stamp on the inside without having to do an insert. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. It also makes it seem less patriotic because it's not, you know, the red, white, or navy blue. So for the inside, I'm gonna go back to the original uh, Avery L. Astronauts stamp set. And I'm just gonna keep the inside pretty simple. I'm going to stamp it in forget-me-not ink and grab my pressure pal there and I use the sentiment that says have a stellar birthday which I thought was really nice since the front just says make a wish it doesn't say happy birthday so that kind of just pulls the whole thing together and then once again I will stamp it with my background stamp, or not my background stamp, but my personal stamp while I have that ink out. So that always matches to the inside. Okay. Okay, so let's get this card put together. I'm going to start by adding my pattern paper to the front. And I just trimmed down this striped print to be the full size of the card just to make it easy. You could have also cut it down on this side since this part piece is going to cover up, but then um, I would have had to like measure and you know, I'm not worried about that little bit of pattern paper being wasted, you know. So then I'm going to take this star print and I'm going to put that over on the left side, and I did not get that one there straight, so let me adjust that quickly before the glue dries. Okay, and then I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of this panel as well. So more strips onto that one. I'm not used to talking while I'm doing doing this. Sorry guys. I usually have an audiobook playing when I'm filming. I love to listen to audiobooks. So 
I um, just finished one last night and then today I was going to start Kate Quinn's Diamond Eye. I don't know if any of you guys have read that, but that's the one I'm going to start next. Alright, so I'm going to line this up in the center of the card. Make sure I have about equal sides both ways. All right, and then I can bring in my images. And now we've got this uh, speech bubble to worry about as well. So um, we're gonna just go ahead and arrange these once again. I think this guy was somewhere over here. And the moon was up there. And we had these guys down below. And my son just informed me that we have 10 minutes until I have to leave to take him to work. So let's see if we can finish this up quick before I go. So what I'm thinking is to have this go for this guy. How does that look? I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna commit to that because I don't have time to think about it. And we'll start adhering these guys down. So we've got this guy. And he's walking along with his buddy, the little alien, which I think is so cute. Adorable. And then let's do the rocket balloon. We'll add that next since that's going behind his hand. Oh. Got a little too much glue on the back of that I guess. I'm getting sloppy while I'm trying to hurry. How's that? Okay. I can go there, get the moon up in the top corner. And then we'll do the speech bubble next. And then we'll get this guy on. Going right here. Maybe we'll even have him overlapping that speech bubble just a little bit. So it's clear that he's the one that's saying that. And then we've got our stars. Maybe one there. There. Oh. And then I actually found some more stars that are from Hello Bluebird, but they're very similar and I think it's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and add them and then we'll see if I can add a little extra color on there to kind of change them to match the, the stars that we've already got going on. So maybe up here we'll have a big one. Stick it to me. There we go. And then put one over on this side. And let's do one more. I'll put that one right there. All right, so what color can I color those quickly to match? 
I'm thinking Y26 and Y21. So let me start with the Y26. I think it'll be close enough, even if it isn't exactly what I used the first time. It's still more of that kind of brownish yellow rather than the bright yellow that I used on these Hello Bluebird ones. And then Y21 to blend that out. And that should work. Did I get them all? I think so. And you know, those will dry back a little bit too, so they'll probably look even more like the other ones when they do. So let's go ahead and finish this one up with a little bit of glitter on these stars. It's also going to help them kind of hide any inconsistencies in the coloring because they're going to have that sparkle to kind of deflect that a bit. All right, I don't think it's too noticeable that they're from two different sets. So that is going to finish off that card. And there is a peek at the inside. So here are the two cards we made today using pre-colored images from my stash. And I still have a whole lot more. I have these and then I also have these guys here. So if you enjoyed this and you'd like to do another one of these videos with me, let me know and I can definitely create another one and use up some more of those images. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that notification bell so you never miss a video, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.